Well, no matter where you are, this week's anniversary triggers a range of emotions, from sadness to anger to stress. So how do you cope? Well, we've invited three guests to offer some answers on that. Here in the studio, we're joined by forensic psychologist David Mutton. In Melbourne, we're joined by Andrew Heslop from the Red Cross. And in Perth this morning, morning, clinical psychologist Clark Perry. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Thank you for your Good time. Morning. David, if I may begin with you, what sort of emotions and feelings would um, Australians in particular be feeling today? Australians experience of September the 11th was a step back from the American experience. So the American experiences we've seen on television has been quite intense. But in Australia, uh, the same feelings have been reflected in the people that I've um, spoken to. Sadness, fear, anxiety, um, worry about the future. But I think it's at a more filtered, at a more distant level than the Americans would be experiencing. You've got a range of experience going back through the Threadbow disaster, Port Arthur, those, those traumatic events for Australia. What, what advice do you give to, to people to, to try and get through moments like this, days like this? Well, in contrast to previous wars and disasters where people were advised not to speak about the war mm. and their families were advised not to ask them about it, the approach these days is quite different. Um, expression of feeling is considered the most appropriate way of dealing with these emotions and trying to get back into normal routines. And so the commemoration yesterday where there's a lot of catharsis of feeling has probably been very useful mm. in this process. Clark Perry, we can turn to you. I know that you've got a rather personal connection. Your dad used to work there in the World Trade Centre, so I guess uh, mm. it sort of impacted on you a little more closely than, than the rest of us. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a very trying time um, as a person. Um, it's, I have an immense sense of pride as, a, as an Australian citizen and an American citizen, a tremendous sense of pride and, and at the same time a, a deep sense of sadness and remorse and yeah, it's difficult even holding back the tears. But yeah, my dad retired out of the trade centres and um, I, I agree, it, this is a time when I think we all have to be able to show our emotions, be able to talk about it openly and, and be able to have that, that discourse that's going to move us to another place. How do you, Clark, I mean you, you work for the IIS, the Institute of Sport. It, how do you it's true. teach athletes to deal with the, the highs and lows of the traumas of, of life? And what are there lessons there that can be applied here and to these situations to, to, to everyday Australians? I think that's a very good point that needs to be brought out is that people don't have to have experienced a public catastrophe in order to actually experience trauma. A lot of times we can look at it from a, from a public perspective and, and, and and deem it to be very insignificant. But for that person, it can be very traumatic. And, and I think the big thing there, again, is, is, is to openly be able to demonstrate the emotions, to be able to work through, and oftentimes, hopefully, with a, with a medical professional or a mental health professional, to be able to go through some, some cognitive and behavioral strategies to overcome that. If we may begin uh, bring you in here, Andrew Heslop with the Red Cross, you did lose a staff member. Yvonne Kennedy was on the American Flight 77, crashed into the Pentagon. Are you having to use some of these, um, these techniques for staff to cope today? Yes, uh, Mel, we are. And, uh, of course, uh, our, our volunteers who worked very closely with Yvonne, uh, particularly in New South Wales, have found that. Um, Yvonne, in fact, uh, led the organisation for about 25 years and was a staunch supporter of uh, first aid training and skills and disaster preparedness. So it seems somehow ironic in uh, talking about this today that uh, Yvonne uh, is the person who really encouraged, the, particularly the people of New South Wales, to update their first aid skills, to be prepared for a disaster when it occurs either in the workplace or close to home. Is it, I'm just, uh, there was a, a CBS program shown the other night, one of the victims of a, a woman who'd lost her husband in the, uh, in, at Ground Zero, September 11, was saying the word closure should be banned, it doesn't apply. Do you, do you agree with that statement, Andrew? I mean, or is there a time that people really have to say, let go and put it behind them and is that time today well, I think, uh, as, as your guests, the psychologist will say, it's, it's a process. And uh, like any, through any grieving process, you, there are stages, um, particularly for organisations like Australian Red Cross, who actually prepare communities and, and uh, individuals to cope with a disaster and a crisis. The, uh, the, the challenges are many. But uh, what we have found since September 11 last year is a significant increase in the number of Australians who want to come to us to either be disaster and emergency services volunteers to be able to 
to help out their uh, friends and family and their neighbours and colleagues when disaster strikes. Uh, we've also found that there's been a significant increase in the number of people who want to uh, come and take part in our accredited first aid courses so they can mm. be of some use. Uh, and the other uh, interesting and, uh, and immediate response was the blood service collection centres across the country were overrun with people who wish to give blood. And of course the organisation can never have enough blood um, but the challenge is to convert the, uh, the people who immediately rushed in and wanted to provide assistance into long term blood donors so that there is always blood and blood products available uh, during a crisis. Clark, I noticed you nodding. i just come back to you. Is this, mm. is this the way that people can help? They think they can control this, whereas we can't capture Osama bin Laden and we can't go to New York and clean mm. up, but we certainly can do some of these things at home. And isn't that, that pride that we have as being part of that society, that, that we have this immense need to want to give to one another? I, I think that's tremendous. I, I do agree, by the way, about the statement on closure, in that I, I don't like the idea of ever thinking that something is closed. Everything should always be open, and it is a process that we're always going through. It's just that we move beyond where we were, we move to another place, and, and hopefully that's a, that's a better place than where we were. David, we've had a lot of response from uh, people in the community saying that they're over it, and they've been criticising the media for, for the coverage over, over this last couple of days. Uh, how does the community judge what is enough and, and what is too much in, in this respect? Does it become down to an individual thing? I think it would be very unusual if there wasn't some commemoration to the extent that we've had and, and I would find it very unusual if the media didn't um, uh, use that, um, that commemoration. The commemoration is very important because a 12 month anniversary in part of the grieving process is usually very significant. It's not, it's not about finishing or closure, but it marks a very significant point in that recovery. So I think this is totally appropriate. Mm. And I think also it gives opportunities to highlight some of the positive things that have emerged out of this, some of the heroic work that people have done and the um, new renewed consciousness about fighting terrorism. So all those things I think can be catapulted from this interest and celebration, uh, oh, commemoration. commemoration. David Martin, we thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Clark Perry to you as well and to Andrew. Andrew Heslop from the Red Cross. Thank you very much for your time Thanks, this morning. Chris, all thanks, Chris. Thanks, Mel. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We'll be coming back uh, straight after the break from this coverage of our special edition of Sunrise on 7.